get you situated here, folks. <coughs> ah, this is, uh, hey, Charlie, how you doing? <coughs> All right, we're going to try to get started here. All right, my name is Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Been one for 43 years. All right. So what we got going is we're, we're starting now broadcasting on Periscope through Twitter also. So we're going to try this on, on uh, Twitter. And we've been having some issues with connectivity. And it just recently started this past month, and I'm not sure why. So we're going to use the Twitter feed uh, to do our live broadcast. Before, we were going straight off of Periscope, but uh, the connectivity problems are there. So, hey, hi there, Wonka, or whoever that was that was there. Again, my name is Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. And been one for 43 years. Probably longer than most of you guys have been alive, so. So, we're going we're gonna to start this thing uh, with our normal introductions. And uh, it's always interesting because we're, we're currently on Twitter and uh, Periscope. Uh, I don't know how to say this, but because they're both connected, we're at 28,353 views at 254,000 hearts and 26,800 on YouTube views, all right? So somebody's watching, and uh, our, our count has fluctuated a lot because of some connectivity issues. Again, on, I'd have to say, on uh, Periscope. Let's see, I think I'm going to have to change my camera around. So hold on, I'm going to have to do this. I think we get a better shot. So hang on a minute, we're just going to flip you over here. And let's do this. And if that doesn't mess you up, I don't know what will. All right, let's try that. We got the camera on the other side. And let's just see how that's going to work out now. All right. And let's do some changing here a little bit. All right. What we're trying to do, I want you to get my name back there. All right. Hey, that's a little better, I think. Uh, all right, that's pretty much got it. I think that'll work. Oh, all right, let's bring her down just a little bit, huh? All right. All right, dear camera. All right, we should be good to go from there, all right? Everything looks good on there. All right, so. All right. Again, well, let's show you where I'm at. This is where we're broadcasting from Missouri right here that's in the center of the u.s as you guys know all right this is my name again etker o-e-t-k-e-r norman you can google it you'll find us there's no doubt about that we broadcast on wordpress periscope youtube twitter instagram facebook tumblr linkedin instagram google plus vk and path this is a normal everyday thing. Everything. So here you are, Norman Edgar YouTube, Norman Edgar, hashtag Edgar Norman on Instagram, Twitter, and at God Spokesman. Okay. 
at God Spokesman. We'll get you there on Twitter. All right. This is what we believe, folks. It's kind of important. Most of you. You know, there's a difference between you can believe in the Bible, all right, and still go to hell. You can believe in God, go to hell, and believe in Jesus and go to hell. It's, it's not your beliefs that determines your eternal destiny. All right, you can believe <clears throat> you can believe your church is right, right, and go straight to that lake of fire. All right, you can be a morally good, decent, tax-paying, law-abiding person, never been arrested, never had any trouble, and go straight to that lake of fire. Never been angry at anybody. You go like that. You go right to that lake of fire. It's this whole thing. It you don't go to heaven or hell by your actions. Okay? And I, if for the life of me, I don't know why this isn't explained. Alright? Here, it's this whole concept about God is about a spiritual relationship that, that man, man has a spirit. Okay, there'd be you that out there, you don't believe that, then that's okay. Doesn't change the fact you have a spirit. And that spirit was given to you by God. He breathed into Adam and brought life to Adam. Without the spirit, you can't live. The spirit is that driving force that makes your little tick-tock go tick, tick, tock, tick, tock. All right, your heart. So... <clears throat> That, that life force that makes all things go is from God. Now that life force, and I, I just don't understand why people don't just explain the truth to people. When you read the Protestant Christian Bible, Old and New Testament, when you read the Old Testament, God created Adam and he was perfect. He was innocent. The guy didn't know right from wrong. Super intelligent guy. He named all the fishes, I mean, not, I mean, not the fish, but the uh, animals that were brought before him, the birds in the sky as they flew by. He, he could name them. He named them. He didn't, couldn't. He just named them. So if you know anything about language, rudimentary languages start out with, <laughs> with sounds and and you add more sound, vowel, consonant clusters together, and you, your word progresses, and it means a complex set of things. The more advanced the language, the more compounds, more consonant cluster, con consonant vowel clusters chain together, making longer words. All right, and it just shows you the advancement of a civilization. Adam knew all of that from the get-go. It wasn't something he had to learn. He didn't go to school. He didn't have private tutors. All right? He was a bright, intelligent, superhuman being at that time. Destined to live forever. You understand that? He wasn't meant to die to begin with. All right? You just read the first couple of chapters of Genesis and you'll see what I'm saying. It's absolutely true. There's no argument about it. <coughs> and God felt like he needed a helpmate. God calls to sleep and here he took one of Adam's ribs and from that rib created a man. A woman, I mean. And uh, so that's how Eve came into existence. Now these two, because Adam's super intelligent, Eve was super intelligent, everybody's intelligent here. Perfectly innocent. Running around with no clothes on, didn't think nothing about it. They were innocent. When I say innocent, the scripture, the New Testament stories of them two people, the first humans, they did not know right from wrong. There was no wrong. There was no right. 
Everything was perfectly innocent. Okay? I know that might be hard. Animals and creatures, there was no fear, there was no animosity, no vitriol between people and, and animals of any kind. Snakes or any creeping, crawling thing it didn't make any difference. They, everything was harmony. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. I'm just wondering, do you think maybe you should explain that being innocent is not what we now think of as naive? They oh. naive. Okay. Yes, uh, Selma brings a point up and uh, it's about explaining innocent. And the best way, I think, to explain, and she was saying that people think innocent is naive. That's not it at all. Innocence, I think, the best way to be explained today is when you hold a baby in your arms. That little baby doll is absolutely innocent of anything. It can't do anything. All right? It just wants to be fed and hugged and held and uh, loved, and that's it. And a diaper change. <laughs> okay. But it, the baby is innocent. It has no thinking faculties as far as making some kind of rational decision. It doesn't know right. Baby doesn't know right from wrong. It's in a complete innocent state. All right? That's... I can liken it to that as a baby. But the difference is that that baby is born in sin. All, right? all babies are born in sin. And all babies that grow up stay in sin. No matter how old they get until their spirit is regenerated. That means spiritually born again. All right? Now, if a baby dies, that baby goes to heaven because the baby had no reasoning ability to make the choice of accepting or denying Christ and regeneration. It's by faith, by grace, that you can become a Christian. There are mucho religions in Protestant that believe man has no say, that God selects who he wants to be a Christian, and everybody else he selects to go to hell. And that's an absolute lie in any church doctrine that teaches that God wants you to go to hell is of the devil. All right, simple as that. God sent Jesus to save the world. This is basic 101 Christianity. He didn't send Jesus to condemn the world. He sent Jesus to save the world. So, we're back to Adam and Eve. They were completely innocent. They didn't know right from wrong. They didn't know that there was bad. They didn't know that there was good. Everything was fine with them. They were innocent. I don't, you just, there's no knowledge. It's just like if I say to you, a lot of people here on uh, Twitter and Periscope, if I said to you, uh, would you converse with me in Chinese or Mongolian or, the, or in the Chukchak Eskimo language? Well, you would have no idea whatsoever of anything about the Chukchai Eskimos. You might know a little Chinese because of going to a restaurant. <laughs> but, you know, you wouldn't, sweet and sour, but you wouldn't know anything about the Chukchaks in northern uh, Siberia, there north of Russia. You wouldn't know any of that, or anything about them. So in a sense, I guess, in a strange way, you could say you were innocent as far as your knowledge. You didn't know nothing about the two types up there. They got to, they'd be cold. <laughs> we're in a lot of furs. But you wouldn't know anything. Adam and Eve did not know that there was right from wrong. All right? Then God said that. Now, I'm... This is a good point. I wish people would really remember it. 
God only talked to Adam about not eating that fruit. God didn't talk to Eve. God told Adam. And what the thing is, we don't know. Number one, we don't know how long Adam was on the face of the earth by himself. On the face of the earth by himself. We don't know that. We don't know how long it was until Eve came on the scene in Adam's life. We don't know how long Adam and Eve spent on the face of the earth until God took them and placed them in the Garden of Eden. We don't know how long that was. It could have been one day, ten years. A thousand years. We really, we really don't know. And I say that because we don't have exact time to be able to say that. We have people that come up with all these goofy theories. One day is a thousand years in the Lord and all this kind of stuff because of some Bible quotes. And they don't believe that. We have no idea if that's what God meant literally or not. It's just people just want to be something. So anyway, these two are together, and God told Adam, don't do this one thing. All right? And Adam knew it. Adam didn't do anything about it. He just went about his business. He told his wife, God said, don't do this. And the wife was lured into thinking that she knew better. All right, and it just, and that's the old trap. It, it goes on and on and on, right? And so problems between men and women have been ever since that day. And it's never going to stop, really, okay, to tell you the truth. So, when Adam, and I'm just going to try to stick with Adam here, when he took a bite of that fruit, he thought about it, he was going to do it, took it to his mouth and he doubted that God's word was true and he bit into that apple and immediately this human was changed in a twinkling of an eye just like when you regenerated well he was degenerated degenerated in a twinkling of an eye. When that physical action along with his submissive free will to do that act coincided at that moment and he actually did it like pulling the trigger on a gun when he actually bit into that tree or into that fruit <coughs> instantaneously you know what happened? Death came to him, physically and spiritually. Sin brought death to him and to everything around him. His wife was in death and sin now as he was too. The children that were born of them same condition, death and sin. They were physically, as soon as he took a bite of that apple, he was physically dying. Instantly started to die. Physical death, his body began to deteriorate from that instant that he bit into that thing. Spiritually, he died at that time. Okay. Now, this physical death took this perfect human being a thousand years to happen. He lived to be 900 some years old. So you can see everybody, if you look at the chain, the timeline for the first 900 years of all the people that were born, a whole lot of people knew Adam. And a whole lot of people know what God told Adam. 
When God cornered them in the garden, he cursed that animal to slither on its belly for its entire existence on this planet. He told the woman, you're going to have great pain in childbirth, and he told the man, you are going to work by the sweat of your brow. But he said in Genesis 3.15, God said that in the future there was going to be a person born of a woman that was going to crush and be hurt in doing it the power of Satan over humanity. Salvation for man was coming. Adam and Eve, under their punishment, now knew that there was one coming. And I'm sure Adam and Eve thought at that time it would be one of their children would be the one to set them free, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen in the next generation. And the generations went on and on. And now we're told that about 6,000 or so years passed before that seed was actually born. Between five and 7,000 years passed till the birth of Christ. All of those people that waited and believed God what Adam transmitted. Everybody, you hear people say about, oh, the Chinese religion was so many thousand years old. Da, 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 da. They all, all religions sprang forth from the words of Noah and his descent. I mean, of, well, really of Noah too, but of Adam to Noah and then Noah onward. Noah was the guy in the boat. You know, his family is the only ones left on this earth. Noah believed God. Noah believed his family. Probably his son was going to have and daughter might possibly be the one to bring forth that seed that was going to crush the power of evil. Maybe he thought he was the one. Or in his family. It didn't happen with them. All, all these so-called supposedly ancient religions it's a joke if you just check it out. They all sprang from Noah. All of them. The Mung Hill tribe people I work with, it's the same thing. You ought to listen to some of their folk stories that they tell of their Mung God. It is a joke. They talk about two people in an iron boat. And where'd they get that story? And you'll just, in all religions, all fanciful, uh, just make-believe. The Jewish people do the same thing about their history. When you look at the Tama and you really begin to study some of those things, they had priests that made up stories for one reason to tell the children of Israel of a mighty, powerful nation and different stories about different Jewish people that were pure fantasy. And do you know why these high priests and priesthood were, were commissioned to do that? Because the nation of Israel would be defeated by foreign powers. And why? They, they, they weren't strong? No. They were in punishment from God for their rebellious, stiff-necked, hateful attitude towards God. God sent the prophets into Israel over and over and over, saying, stop your sinning. Well, what did those people do? Kept on sinning. And then you listen to the Jews today, you think, the whole world's against them. That's what you think. You would think the whole world is against the Jewish. It's all them Islamists, all them Muslims. They're all going to kill the nation of Israel. <laughs> Look, listen, people, that's not the truth. 
Israel is a stiff-necked, rebellious people against God today, 2017. They no more believe that Jesus is the Messiah than a man in the moon, just like the American people, the people in Europe and Australia. They don't believe God. They don't believe in nothing. They got every country, and in every country they got their own religions, and they'll believe anything they want. They make their God out to be any way they want. Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Islam is Roman Catholic, Presbyterian, Amish, Mennonite, Pentecost. They make up their church rules, their doctrine, amen. This is a law. And they'll kill you in a heartbeat, go to war, murder each other all in the name of God, and all think they're Christian or some kind of godly religion. They're evil, all of it. The whole world's evil. Simple truth of it. God breathed life into Adam and was done. Adam, when he took a bite, freely knew he wasn't supposed to do something. He listened to see if deception came. He bit into the apple and immediately he began to die. Today, the gospel message, believe it or not, is the Word of God coming back again by the power of the Holy Spirit. You understand? It's just like Adam knew, here's the tree, don't do it, because sin's going to bring death instantaneously, sin and death in your life when you disobey. And he chose, he weighed it out in his mind, he chose to disobey. Today it's the same thing. The gospel message is brought today. It's brought before you. Will you say to God you're sorry? Will you sincerely ask God for forgiveness? Will you sincerely ask Jesus to be your Lord of your life? Will you sincerely say you'll follow Jesus' truth? as you read them in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. The whole thing is right before you. Your decision, just like it was with Adam, when he sinned, he had a decision to make. Today, 2017, it's the same thing with you on Twitter and Periscope that are watching me now, or this be on Facebook. It's going to be a lot of places, but you're going to have the same decision. The gospel message is for now. Salvation is now. It's brought to you in a twinkling of an eye, this regeneration by the Holy Spirit of God, brought to you by the love and favor of God called grace, can instantaneously change your life. What are you going to do? That's the gospel message. That's what we are about here. Norman and Selma Edgar, Protestant Christian missionaries. There's no more, no less. We're not going away. We're not changing the message. We're not representing any Protestant hypocrite church out there. If you think you're going to find God going to a church, all you're going to find is a bunch of people that are in the same mess that you're in. They don't, people don't care that you could go to hell. The only people, the, why, that's why the church is so sorry today. The church is not about Jesus Christ. It's about religions. The church today is to be understood the body of Christ is and only is the people that obey what Jesus says, not a theology brought on by their church upbringing. All church, Protestant church doctrines are meaningless. 
you follow the writings of any preacher man, anything, and want to do like he did or say like he did and preach like he did, it's meaningless in your life. Maybe you'll hear people say, oh, I have been the anointing. I was edified when I heard this. I heard that. What you heard is another man talking to another man. What you need is the Holy Ghost of God convicting you to bring you to repentance. If you listen to me, every day you listen to me on Periscope or Twitter now, and you say, well, I'm not, I'm not going to get, I'm not accepting Christ. I'm not telling God I'm sorry. If you keep listening to me all the time, every day, every day, and there's no change in your life. If you think being in that church house has got you covered, that somehow or the other, you can continue to be lukewarm. You can continue to mix with ungodly anti-Bible people and think that God doesn't care. You're deceiving yourself. All church Doctrines today are meaningless. I watched this guy called T.D. Jakes get on TV. He's on TV now. Not on Sunday. He's on every day on one of the big popular channels in St. Louis, Missouri. Not some far-flung cable or some offshoot of the main channel like 4.18 or something. No. He's on the main channel. This guy is an anti-Christ, anti-Bible, anti-everything. The guy doesn't believe the Protestant Christian Bible, and the only reason he says he now he believes parts of it is because he realized he couldn't get a good following. And he still doesn't renounce the people that still believe that don't believe in the Bible. These are the oneness, UPC, Jesus only people. They are destroying Pentecostalism. Just like the charismatic movement. Absolutely a derogatory term. Charismatics are like the word evangelist compared to the used car salesman. Just a out there to shuck and jive and get your money and sell you a bill of goods. The evangelists today, you ever check out them evangelists, you'll find that them old boys were singing in a band or something somewhere, and then they decide they can preach just as good as anybody else, and they'll open their own little church houses, and they'll start. And people are enamored with their looks and personality, how they can play the guitar or sing, and oh man, we're going to follow this guy because I like the way he sings. Or I like the way he plays the guitar. I like the way he talks. They could care less about what the scripture laws he says he believes in God, the Bible, and Jesus, and everything's fine. And every twisted doctrine that comes out of his mouth is okay. Every acceptance of every evil thing on the planet is okay. Because he wants to be neutral in so many things. They're called lukewarm. I'm getting a little bit off the subject here, but I just want you to know, folks. God's got a specific plan for each of us. He had a plan for Adam. Could you imagine what it would be like if Adam had obeyed God? Today, I hear people all day, every day, say things like this. We are in the end times. How terrible and evil this world is today. <coughs> you hear these phony, absolute phony hypocrites, the evangelicals, the religious right, or whatever you want to call them, guys, they are the purest hypocrites on the planet. You hear them all the time. We are in the end times, the end of the world's coming. Where, how do you get that? God sent Jesus to this world. 
Jesus hasn't returned yet. He's going to come in the clouds and those that are believers are going to be caught up in the air with Jesus. Well, that event hasn't happened yet. We are in a time of grace, God's love, power, strength, love, and favor to all human beings right now to be saved. To say to God, you're sorry. To say to God, you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior. To say to God, you will repent and turn to the truths of Jesus, the Apostle of Avenge, as you read. As you understand. Not what some blabbermouth is going to tell you in the church house. There is all these writings of the New Testament talking about the doom that's coming can all be avoided if what? If people would repent. If people would just say to God, I'm sorry. Do you imagine what would happen if Israel would say, hey, we're wrong, man, this Torah thing. We've been off base for 2,000 years. Jesus is our Messiah. Get all the homosexuals in Israel, get all the unbelievers, they all come together, repent, and turn to Jesus. What would happen if all the Palestinians would say, wow, we've missed Jesus for 2,000 years, and they embrace each other as brothers and sisters in Jesus? Imagine what would happen in Russia and China if they all said we love Jesus. What would happen in the United States if all the people in the United States would say, we love Jesus? The whole world would be different today, and it's all within the realm of possibilities. But what stops that from happening? You know what happened? The reason we are in a pathetic worldwide mess today is because of the hypocrite. Christian religionist. They have destroyed the power of God's grace, love, and favor to humanity and substituted for humanitarian works. Look what we did for you. We rebuilt your country after we bombed it out of existence. Look what we did. Open these hospitals, medical clinics. We helped you with the earthquakes, famines, wars, rumors of war. We helped you, even though we started most of them. We, we still helped you. Such hypocrisy. Today, everything can be different in your life. Today, you're going to hear this message of mine, uh, just like you hear Selma, my wife's. You're going to decide what you're going to do. Each day, it passes by. Each day, I come on here and I get worked up and a little tizzy about it, about the arrogance and condescension. I heard an old boy say something the other day I thought was right on target. And he was talking about journalists, people that call themselves journalists. And he made an excellent point. He said, just because someone's got a higher education, they think that their view of things is the correct view. He said, that's the journalist today. It's their way or the highway for everyone else. And that's the simple truth. Today is the first day I've been on this. We're broadcasting this way through Twitter on to Periscope, all right? And the Twitter and Periscope are owned by the same company. We've had connectivity problems with Periscope, opening the Periscope app and just broadcasting. We were doing fine up until about a month ago or so. 
six weeks now and I'm not sure what transpired but I know that there was a lot of activity with some new updates and new versions of things and uh, everything kind of went sideways from that. We were getting people, we were getting hundreds, 200 views a day on Periscope. Now it's dropped down to hardly nothing. And people that did come through were telling us of connectivity issues. So today is the really the first day. What is this? Today is the 12th, I think, right? Let me look. Friday? Yeah, today is the 12th of May, so I've decided... It's about quarter to 11 in the morning here on this Friday morning. So I decided we're going to try to do all of our broadcasts, opening up Twitter and going live on Twitter. And Twitter feeds into Periscope at the same time. So people can actually uh, look at things. And I believe that Twitter and Periscope together reach more people than Facebook Live. Now we we broadcast on Facebook Live too, and it looks like a great picture. Everything looks good on our end. We don't see any kind of jumping or freezing on our end when we use Facebook Live, and that's running through our laptop, and we're running a, a seven-inch uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook doing this, okay, and uh, so. Today is the first day of this, so we've been going about 45 minutes here, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to, I'm going to cut today's broadcast off, and we've been, like I said, been on about 45 minutes here, and we're going to see how this looks on the other medias, and so, but I'll be back tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time, from here in Missouri the center of the U.S. This is Missionary Norman Edgar saying adios, folks.